Hello, my name is Alex Badges, and I'm the staff quantitative ecologist for MACERC, the Minnesota Aquatic Invasive Species Research Center, and also the lead developer of this app, PI Charter. PI Charter is our online dashboard and submissions portal for point intercept or PI aquatic plant survey data, hence the PI and PI Charter. Our mission is to build a comprehensive statewide database for these data, like those being built in Wisconsin, Michigan, and elsewhere, to inform management, guide decision making, and facilitate a better overall understanding of the health and diversity of our inland lake communities. When you arrive on PA Charter, you'll find that there are four tabs that you can visit at this time. You specifically land on this tab, the overview tab, which is the one that I'm going to be covering in this video tutorial. I'll be covering the other tabs in separate videos. Here on the overview tab, you can see at a glance the extent of the records in our PI survey database today's date summarized to the lake level. If you are new to PI Charter or if you want to learn more about it or about the PI surveys and our work within them, you can click this button that says start here. That will open up a menu that sort of pops up a file drawer of additional information, including links to many other resources. Some highlights in this menu include a guide to what a PA survey even is, how one is different from other kinds of plant surveys that exist, why MACERC is gathering PI surveys and thinks they're important in the first place, and why PI Charter defaults to using scientific names instead of common names, among other topics. I want to particularly highlight this last menu option, though. New this year, MACERC is encouraging all entities that contract for PI surveys in the state to include language in those contracts stipulating that those data will be submitted to MACERC through PI Charter once they are completed. To this end, we are providing on this tab some generalized language that your organization can use and adapt for this purpose if you're interested. If you are willing to do this, we'd be grateful because we would love to have your data. You can dismiss this menu whenever you're ready by hitting the dismiss button or by clicking off of the tab anywhere on screen. As we return to the tab itself, I want to point out that we have two main interactive elements on this tab for you to explore and play around with. On the left, we have a map that shows a marker for every lake for which we have at least one PI survey record in our database at time of viewing. At this moment in time, that's over 1,600 lakes, so there are a lot of dats on this map. The lakes that are shown here in blue are public records, whereas the green markers are for lakes that are on tribal lands. I'll talk more about those in a second. If you hover over one of these markers, a little pop-up will come up that gives you more information about that individual lake, including that lake's name, its county, and its unique Minnesota DOW number. Uh, the map is interactive, so you can use your mouse or your fingers to pan and zoom the map to check it out and look at any different resolution that you might want to. The other major interactive element here is a table on the right that will show us summary details for any lake whose map marker we have already clicked on. So if I come over here and click on a map marker, you will notice that that map marker turns purple, indicating that that marker is active. That will trigger the app to pull up the summary information for that lake and then display them in the table on the right hand side, including how many surveys we have from that lake so far, when those surveys were conducted, the total number of unique taxa that have been found at that lake across all of those surveys, what those taxa were, and whether any of them are considered invasive or not. You can click on multiple markers here if you want to send multiple records over to the table, uh, perhaps because you want to make some comparison between lakes. To instead remove a record from the table, all you need to do is come back over here to this map and re-click that marker, and it'll turn blue again and come back out of the table. The table itself has many interactive features. For example, you can change the number of records that show up on one page. You can change the number of pages that are being shown or which page it is that you're on on the table. You can sort the table using these little arrows next to every column. And you can even search the table using a string or a substring of characters, which will bring up any records, any rows basically that match that string that you're searching for. Now, you'll notice that when I hover over the green markers over here, <laughs> uh, 
the information in the hover content is a little bit different. It says record hidden on tribal lands, see disclaimers. These lakes that are on tribal lands have had their records hidden by MACER to respect the data sovereignty of the tribal communities in our state. So you won't be able to click on these markers to view their records. However, by keeping these records here, this at least shows that those data do exist in our database, even if they aren't necessarily public. If you want to know more about this and any other policies related to our app, all you need to do is scroll down to this disclaimer section and you will see our policies related to the app. That one that I was just talking about where we hide data that are from on tribal lands, that's discussed in the second bullet here. The other bullets here cover things like rules regarding protected species, the anonymity of PI surveyors who are working for the Minnesota DNR, accuracy about the data shown in the app, and even delays in the submission process. We encourage you to read these disclaimers if you plan to use the app regularly and to check with us if you have any questions or concerns about them. I should stress now at this point that there are many more ways to interact with this tab than I've shown you so far. However, to see them, you need to come up here and click this button to open the options menu. In here, you will find three more filters and several more buttons. Uh, let's, for example, say that you wanted to see all the records that we have for a specific county. Before doing this, I'll come down here and I'll deselect these records so we have none selected. If you're interested in all the records we have for a specific county, you can use this county filter for that. Just go in here and pick any county that you're interested in, and the app will zoom you in on that county and show you just all the records that exist for that specific county. Then if, for example, you wanted to see the summary details for every single one of these lakes, you can come over here and hit the select all markers button, which will activate simultaneously all the markers that are currently shown on the map and throw them over into this table. Then let's say you wanted to get a list of all the lakes in that county that you have records for. Maybe you wanted to copy and paste that list into a report. You could get that list by coming up here and clicking the list of lakes button, and you would get a list of all of those lakes in a copy and pasteable format, albeit with the lakes that are on tribal lands excluded from this list. Then let's say you also wanted to have a list of all the unique taxa that had been observed at least once across all the lakes uh, in the current table. You can get that by clicking on this list of taxa button and a comprehensive summary of all the taxa that have been observed so far in the table will instead be shown. Now you'll notice at this point that the app defaults to using scientific names and we have good reasons for that. However, if scientific names are not your thing, you can hit the toggle names button. What this will do is swap out all the names anywhere on this tab to the state recognized common names for those same taxa. So if I reopen this menu, you will now see that what instead is listed in here is the common names instead of the scientific names. Now, keep in mind that common names are often ambiguous and that some people may refer to the same species by many different common names. So these may end up being less helpful than you might think. There's a reason scientific names exist after all. So with that in mind, I'm gonna to toggle this back to the scientific names before proceeding. Anyway, if you wanna download a spreadsheet of all the data that are currently shown in this table, maybe you want to share it with somebody, you can hit the download a CSV button at any time to get that. And you'll be able to open this file in Excel or any other spreadsheet software that you may own on your computer. Okay, there are two more filters I wanna talk about on this tab before we proceed. Um, I'm going to, before doing that though, clear all the records from this table, which you can do by hitting the clear selections button. And what that will do is sort of reset the tab to its initial starting state. Okay, these other two filters. What if you're interested in finding a specific lake? If you wanna do that, you can use this DAO or lake selector. If you happen to know your lake's unique eight-digit DAO number, you can see that it's sorted by those in this selector. Maybe, however, you don't know the number for a given lake, but you do know what the lake is called. 
you can backspace out the all that initially exists in this box and instead use this as a search tool. So you can start typing in the lake that you're interested in here and you will get a list of lakes that have that name in them somewhere. Maybe you don't even know which mud lake it is that you're trying to look up, right? There are an awful lot of them in the state. If you find yourself in that position, you can use the Minnesota Lake Finder tool to look up your lake and you'll be able to find the DOW number for that lake on that tool. Um, just keep in mind that we only have records on here for less than 10% of all Minnesota lakes. So it's quite possible we do not have a record for every lake that you are interested in checking out on the app. So just keep that in mind. Uh, also, I should say that if you're struggling to find a specific lake, it may be easier to narrow your search down by county first so that you're not getting a bunch of other lakes by that same name in a different county. Lastly, suppose you are instead interested in a specific taxon. What lakes has it been observed in at least once? Well, you can search for a specific taxon using the taxa observe selector over here. If you select a particular taxon, it will then restrict the map to only lakes where that taxon has been observed in at least one survey. You have multiple options in here. You can pick specific species. You can also, in some cases, pick genera. And if you do that, any species within that genus will be used to decide whether a lake is shown or not. So in this particular case, these are all lakes that have any Carex species, so any sedge that has ever been observed in any of the surveys. So this can be a cool way of seeing how widely or narrowly dispersed a given taxon is within the state and whether it's present in the region around your lake or not. Just keep in mind again, though, that not every lake in the survey, lake in the state has been surveyed before, and we are, of course, missing some survey records, too. Some lakes may also have only been surveyed once or a few times. So just keep in mind that tax are likely to be more widely dispersed than this tool alone indicates, though it's still a pretty cool exploration tool. With that feature explained, that's going to conclude this tutorial for using the overview tab of PI Charter. We appreciate your interest in PA Charter and in this tool. If you have any additional questions, feature requests, or bug reports, please feel free to contact me. My name and contact information is at the bottom of the screen in the app. Thank you.